Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water. The never drying fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power, live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power, live inside of me. You're the living water, the never drying fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control, welcome Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. <coughs> Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power, live inside of me, live inside of me, please live inside of me. Unmute. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Thank you, Holy Spirit. We can do nothing without your presence. Thank you for coming to being inside of us. Give us the life, the joy, the power. Thank you, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Our friendly, forever Father, our glorious guide and guard, our holy heavenly healer, our inspiration, our joys, Jehovah, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, the most magnificent, omnipotent, powerful, protector, provider. You are our righteous redeemer, our saving shield, our true ultimate victory, our way, our Yahweh, our zero Good Lord, good Lord, we love you. Good Lord, we love you. We praise, glory, and honor. We honor you. We worship you. We glorify your name. We honor you. We worship you. Lord God, we love you. Lord God, we love you. Fred, I think you have a word from the Lord to share. The Lord's been putting a word on your heart, Fred. Oh, yes. Um. I always ask him from the Lord because of my legal problem and this is really a great challenge in my part. I'm always requesting the Lord to grant me full freedom and liberty. I'm still having this problem and I have that fear and anxiety that would happen to the trial because trial will start on October 3, and my present concern is, of course, the lawyer is asking a big amount of money for a down payment and also for the monthly payment. But I know the Lord will provide me mm -hmm. the divine providence. So my brothers and sisters, I'm asking your help. Mm. Pray for me. Mm. Thank you, Father. Okay. Joe. You know, there's a neat little quote here that says, God passes through the thicket of the world, and wherever his glance falls, he turns all things to beauty. When the Lord looks at your anxiety and your stresses, Fred, as he looks upon it, it becomes beauty. So trust in the gaze of the Lord on your circumstance. Linda, have your hand up. Yes, um, I too have got a situation of relationship things um, that just is weighing down and it just can't seem to, you know, it's just, I turn it over and turn it over. And I just, I, the Lord spoke to me um, before Fred spoke and you called on him and he just said, be still. And know that I am God. I will bring it to pass when it is time. Mm -hmm. So That's I think God. that applies to Fred also. I think yeah, that yeah. word is for Fred and anyone who's struggling to release things <laughs> mm -hmm. and trust more fully. And yeah. not seeing any results and change. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Joe? Um, I want to bring to mind a couple of things. Remember, we did have a word about how the Lord is a master problem solver, and he's got it under control. That's a lot of money, Fred. I know you're burdened, 
Uh, Linda, I know you're burdened with the relationships. And we're going to minister and pray individually when we break down into groups. But because we are family, you know, since we're all children of God, that means we're all sisters and brothers, right, of each other. And since we are all family, I try to pray every single day, morning and night, with names of particular people here who are facing different things, whether it be healing. In fact, I see some of your faces here now and some I don't see yet. Whether it be healing, whether it be work struggles, whether it be relationship struggles, I write these down and I take them to my prayer time. But we are family, so I would ask that you do this. We've seen things today. We've seen in prior times of people who are really have a heavy cross. And we will pray for you in a minute, you know, after we're teaching, when we break into groups. But please, sisters and brothers, be mindful of our family here. And I pray that, uh, that's right, Leanne just said our, our problems are not too big for God. Amen. Amen. So I would like us to, you know, as family who loves each other, lift each other up. During, you know, and whether praying a rosary and tongue, spontaneous prayer, we could just say, Lord, this decade of a rosary is for all my sisters and brothers who you know their needs, our family, and the Children of God prayer group. But um, we are going to pray. We are going to pray after testimonies. We're going to break into groups. We're going to pray for everybody individually in our group, you know, specifically by name, specifically for your concerns and intentions. So thank you. So thank you, Joel. Uh, I could say today we're going to, well, Sherry is going to be praying for our spiritually lost family members. Yes. I know we all have them. And the neat thing is, like, I prepared this a little over a week ago. And as I went to Mass this morning, and I encourage everybody after tonight's uh, prayers to turn to the reading for today from Ezekiel 18. And it'll be a complete repeat of what I'm going to say. But, you know, I was just the way it fit in because I had prepared this and then the Lord just reinforced it with this scripture reading for the mass today for the Old Testament reading. So, like I say, our talk tonight is praying for spiritually lost family members. So we quote from Psalm 141. Lord, I call to you. Come quickly to help me. Listen to my pleas when I call. Let my prayer be incense before you and my uplifted hands an evening sacrifice. So we have the image of incense rising. Our prayers are rising before the Lord. And as we hold our hands up in prayer, we are raising ourselves up in that prayer and look to the Lord. And he's reaching down like when Peter said, help me, Lord, I'm sinking. What did Jesus do? He reached out, took his hands and lifted him up. So let us... Allow the Lord to reach out and take our hands. Next slide, please. We are here at a time when the world is draw, drawing people away. We see this in our families. We are trying to live your word, but we continuously see our children missing your message. We hurt as we see them being seduced by the world. We hurt to witness the brazen disaffection that they demonstrate to any relationship with you our God. I think we can all identify with children that just can't seem to see God. So as we look at our lives and the way that we have tried to live in accord with you and open ourselves to your Holy Spirit, we wonder why we just can't seem to get the message through. We are led to feel we are failing in living and giving your message. It is only through your word your presence, your love for each of us, that we can boldly keep moving forward under this seemingly terrible failure. Your grace in our lives is so generous and supportive that we can stand faithful even in the face of such failures. Your word your continuous action in our lives gives us the courage to keep strong. When all seems dreary, you gently remind us of our own walk to you. Each of us had to come through trial, sinfulness, 
brokenness to the point of realizing that we could not succeed on our own abilities. Each of us had to get up off the floor of our own failure before we could open our hearts to receive the greatest gift of all in our lives. In our deepest brokenness, we finally climbed out by the loving hand of Jesus. Like Peter, a lot of us did pray. We talked to God. We told him everything. We gave him our grocery list. We told him everything that we wanted. We didn't have a conversation with him. We just told him everything. We asked for things. When desperate, we turned to God. In our great fear and trembling in our times of trial, we would fearfully call out to God. Like Peter, we would start to walk on the waters of life but we would soon take our eyes off of Jesus and see the raging waters of turmoil and begin to sink in our burdens. Matthew 14, Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand, caught him saying, you of little faith, why did you doubt? It was only when our desperation was total that we, like Peter, reached out our hands and said, Save me, Lord, for I am drowning. And finally allowed the Lord to lift us from the waters of turmoil in our lives. The immensity of the Lord's deliverance from the seas of turmoil in our lives allows us to be open to the great gift of the Holy Spirit and to make this momentous change in our lives. These changes in our lives meant such an effect on us that we became totally immersed in the new life that we received, that we almost forgot where we came from. Our new lives are so overwhelming, beautific, that all that was in the past just seems to fade away in the bliss of the new life we have in the world. We are so consumed with the love of our God and the wonder of his presence in our lives that we realize that we want everyone close to us to become enveloped in this great love of God that we have received. We at times forget just how hard we each had to fall before we were able to open our lives to the great gift of Jesus, our personal savior, so that with open arms, we could receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is this great frustration the times leads us to feel we are failing those that are closest to us. The Lord wants us to pray and intercede for our children and our families and to trust that he knows what each of them needs in their lives so that they can come to their own Peter moment of realization that without God, they will die. They need to cry out, Lord, save me. Our prayer is to give them the courage to reach out to the hand of Jesus that will be offered to them in their personal time of conversion as their hearts will finally realize that absolute need for the Lord our God. Do not give up on them. Each person needs to see their human spirit broken at their own hands to be able to realize that they need the spirit of God and to be able to say yes to the gift that God is giving them. Psalm 51 reads, Restore to me the gladness of your salvation. Uphold me with a willing spirit. I will teach the wicked your ways that sinners may return to you. Rescue me from the violent bloodshed, God, my saving God. And my tongue will sing joyfully of your justice. Lord, you will open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. 
for you do not desire sacrifice, or I would give it. A burnt offering you would not accept. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite heart, a contrite, humble heart, O God, you will not scorn. As we see in this psalm, we need to approach our desires for our family, and particularly our children, with a contrite and humble heart if we are to expect answers. Offerings without action of the Spirit will not work. The Lord knows us by our hearts, for it is the heart of the man that God sees, not the exterior as we perceive in our human perception. As we see in our scripture from Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now this Psalm prayer was around the choosing of David. And his father had brought all the older brothers in line and each one were going through and everyone thought, oh, this is a big guy, he's powerful. He's really got it all together. He'll be the one that God chooses. Went, God went through every one of the sons and rejected everyone and then made the father call his last son who was out tending the sheep in the field, call him in. And when he came in, the prophet anointed him with oil because he said, this is the one the Lord has chosen. We get deceived by the looks, appearances. Let's not be deceived that way. When we attempt to change the ways of our wayfaring children by saying, look at what I have achieved, we are saying that you can change your own will by your own willpower. You can do it yourself if you just realize and decide to act. We can demonstrate our life changing event that brought us to the Lord, but unless we can show that it wasn't me, but God that enlightened me so that I could change, then our witness will fall on deaf ears. The awareness to rely on self sufficiency to achieve fulfillment in life is the eventual cause of all our failures. This awareness of this falsehood has to be inspired in us by God. Yeah, we think we're great. We think we got it all together. We think we can figure everything out. Where are we fools? So I took this from Hosea 13. And actually what I did is I wrote the, the Psalm and then I wrote a parallel to it. So we go through the Psalm in each stage with the Psalm verse and then the parallel to it. And the psalm, the theme of the psalm is the death of Ephraim. And uh, the parallel is the death of our children. So when Ephraim spoke, there was terror. He was exalted in Israel, but he became guilty through Baal and died. Our children think us foolish as they worship the ways of the world. Now they continue to sin, making for themselves molten images silver idols according to their skill, all of them the work of artisans. To these offer sacrifice, they say, and people kiss the cows. The world wants us wrapped up in possessions and the drive to get more, and our children have been deceived by that liar, the ruler of this world. Verse three, therefore, they will be like a morning cloud or like the dew that vanishes with the dawn, like chaff storm driven from the thrashing floor, or like smoke out the window. This drive leads them to doubt, unnecessary mortgages, possessions and wants, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual abuses. I, the Lord, am your God since the land of Egypt, God's apart from me, you do not know. There is no savior but me. Our children seek more overtime, better pay, more power, sex, money, possessions for their fulfillment in life. Verse five, I fed you in the wilderness from in the parched land when I fed them 
they were satisfied. When satisfied, they became proud. Therefore, they forgot me. As your parent, I gave you everything. I held nothing back from you and you became content in your human ability. Verse seven. So I will be like a lion to them, like a leopard by the road, I will keep watch. I will attack them like a bear robbed of its young and tear their hearts from their breasts. I will devour them on the spot like a lion as a wild animal would rip them open. I destroy you, Israel. Who is there to help you? <coughs> Our children have become so hardened in their own abilities <coughs> that they must be torn down and broken before they will be able to see their false ways. That is the God of commerce, which they worship. Verse 10, where now is your king that he may rescue you? and all your princes, that they may defend you, of whom you said, give me a king and a princess. I blessed you children, but you have abused. I honored you for your parents' sake, but you have refused to respond. I remove everything until you understand that without me, you have nothing. Parents, you shall pray that their hearts of stone will shatter so that I may place a heart of flesh within so that they may turn and receive my love. <laughs> I give you a king in my anger and I take him away in my wrath. The guilt of Ephraim is wrapped up. His sin is stored away. The birth pangs will come for him but this is an unwise child who when it's time does not present himself at the mouth of the womb. Sin grows, selfishness, desire, wants, cravings of excessive possessions. These all lead away from God. When God, when called to our new life, we run and hide, ignoring the call of God. Shall I deliver them from the power of Sheol? Shall I redeem them from death? Where are your plagues, O death? Where is your sting, Sheol? Compassion is hidden from my eyes. Your children must see their false idols, or they will never repent, confess, and turn to me. The ways of man of evil have blinded them. They have been seduced into thinking this is what life is. Though Ephraim may flourish among his brothers, an east wind will come, a wind from the Lord rising from the wilderness. Wealth will fail. Possessions will wither and rot. Corrosion will devour what is left. That will dry up his spring and leave his fountain dry. It will loot his treasury of every precious thing. It is only when your children discover the futility of their gods that they shall hunger for what I will give to them. You have opened the door, but they need to come in and receive all that I have for them. My dear parents, even in all of this, do not dismay, do not fear, but rather rejoice that I love your children so much that I am willing to go so far to draw them to myself. I do receive your prayers, your desires for the good of your children. Revelation 3.20 says, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. After all, what good parent does not discipline their child in the hope and expectation of making their child's life much better? Hebrews 12. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, 
nor be weary when he reproved by you him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. This tells us that we should have confidence in the help of the Lord when it comes to interceding for our children, our family members that are walking in distractions of the world and the lies of the liar, that is Satan and his minions. I ask you now to take this confidence and make it a part of your life. And as I was putting this all together, I read this really beautiful article by Meg Butcher, and I was so impressed by it that I, and it fit in so good that I, I wanted to include her words in this sharing. So John 4, 16, we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. It's hard when the people we love the most in this life disappoint us. It's painful when those people who we trust with our hearts hurt us. It's easy to replay scenes and conversations over and over in our minds, letting anger and frustration stew and steer us. Pride blurs our vision of ourselves, each other, conversations, and those scenes that we replay. In fact, our brains are capable of editing those scenes and conversations depending upon which alibi we allow ourselves to marinate in. Thoughts can wreak havoc and our minds are powerful. We can manage to craft a great defense in our minds, but all it does is hold us hostage. Living in love, as John wrote in the verse above, releases us from the burden of alibis and stewing over injustice and hurt. God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The hurt is real, but we don't have to bathe in it. We have the power through the Holy Spirit living in us through Christ Jesus to take our minds back by giving the hurt to him. He defends us, purifies us, forgives us, strengthens us, and walks through the hurt with us. But we must give it to him. We must stop fighting and start the process of forgiving, whether an apology comes our way or not. Living in love is redirecting our trust from ourselves to God, for he is love. He is the only one capable of piloting the seas and swells of hurt in our lives. We are going to hurt others and they are going to hurt us. In fact, the closer we get to our people, the better chance for a bitter hurt. It's a guarantee. Instead of digging our feet in, stubbornly defending our alibis and building walls around our pride, we can be free. We can let go, look in the mirror and realize we are all on that same team, fighting the same battle with our sinful selves and loved by the same God who has the power to restore peace despite of all. Let's pray to live in that kind of love. Let us hope in God's unfailing love. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we praise you for this day and your purpose for it. This is the day you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we know how much you love us and those whom we love and agonize over. Give us the grace so that we can put our trust in your love. You are love, God. And all who live in love live in you and you in them. Glory to you, the one true triune God. Abba, Father, Jesus, Messiah, Spirit, Counselor. It's through you we find the strength, power, and determination to live in love. When we are tempted to stew and steer our situation, Remind us, Holy Spirit, to release our grip on it to you. 
Help us to be unoffendable, Father. Let us remember the love and forgiveness you have for all of us to send your one and only son, Jesus, to die for our sins, to rescue us. And Jesus, thank you for willingly walking to the cross to die so that we may know what it is to live in love, not just here on earth, but for eternity. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to abide in us, comforting, counseling, advocating, and helping us through our everyday lives. Teach us what it means to live in love, Lord. Help us to fully accept your love and willingly pass it on to the people you have purposely placed in our lives. We think particularly of our children and family members who have blinded themselves to you and all that you have for them. Father, let us be quick to apologize wholeheartedly when we have caused hurt. And let us be quick to forgive even before we receive an apology. Jesus, we need you. We can't live in love without you. Come into our lives in a fresh, undeniable way today. Heal the deep hurts we are tempted to hold onto and dig back up those events that should be as far away as the East is from the West. As Joe had shared earlier about laying down your burdens, and as I shared with that, put them as far as the East is from the West because then they will never be back. So let the power of your spirit, your Holy Spirit, take those offenses away permanently. Help us to let go of any offenses we are holding onto and rid our hearts of any unforgiveness, preventing us from living in the freedom of your unconditional love. And we pray today, every day, to live in love. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. And so as we close this sharing, I would like each one of you to read this along with me and pray this from your heart. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that through that same spirit, we may be truly wise and rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I like your parallel application. That's great. Amen. So we do our song, closing song, Isn't He? Okay. Please move. Isn't he beautiful, beautiful, isn't he, Prince of Peace, Son of God, isn't he? Isn't he? Wonderful, isn't he? Counselor, Almighty God, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he? Yes, you are beautiful, beautiful, yes, you are, Prince of Peace, Son of God, yes, you are, yes, you are.
Yes, you are. Yes, you are wonderful. Wonderful, yes you are, Counselor, Almighty God, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are. Counselor, Almighty God, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are, yes you are.